Lord, say a word to me. I need to hear from you. Oh, Lord God of heaven, I will not leave your presence. Until I hear from you Your word brings life to me Your word is health to me O oh Lord God of heaven Not leave your presence until I hear from you, Jesus. Lord, say a word to me. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from oh, you. I need to hear. I will, will do what you say. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. I need to hear. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. I need to hear. I will do what you say. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. To hear, I will do what you say. I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. I need to hear. I will do what you say. I need to hear. From you, I need to hear. From you, I need to hear. I need to hear. From you, I need to hear. Father, I thank you for this word that you just gave. I give this word into your hands. I ask you that you will immerse it in the oil of the Holy Spirit and set it on fire. O oh, Spirit of the living God, let it be burned into the spirits of your people. Let it be never taken away by the devourer. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that this word may do something significant in the spirits of your people. O oh, Lord, establish this word into the souls of your people. I come against all the forces of darkness and every demonic spirit that is warring against the hearts, minds, and bodies of your people. Every evil spirit that is trying to take away that which God wants to give. Every evil spirit that is trying to resist the work of God. Every demonic spirit that is trying to disrupt this word from God. I bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I render their works powerless and their efforts powerless at the foot of the cross in the name of Jesus. And I give Satan and his demons no permission over this hour and over the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. And I commit every single person into your hands. May the warm oil of the Holy Spirit be poured into the ears of your people. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let this word that you've given accomplish that which, for which it's being sent at this hour. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And I ask you that the freedom to give your word be given to your servant at this hour. Every evil spirit that's trying to hinder the word from being given, I bring them down right now in Jesus' name. And I take victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn our Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We will see what the Lord has for us. John chapter 6. And I will read from verse 15 onwards. John chapter 6 from verse 15 onwards. Please pray this prayer after me. Lord, open my eyes to see your truth. Lord, open my ears to hear your truth. Lord, open my mind to receive your truth. Lord, open my heart to keep your truth. Let me be a doer of your word and not a hearer only. Let me bring forth much fruit to the praise and glory of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Speak, Lord. I will listen and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. John chapter 6, from verse 15 onwards. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because, of, because a great wind was blowing. Read verse 18 again. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. Verse 19. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid, but he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Praise be to God. I'm going to read verse 15 again. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. We'll just stop here for a minute. When you look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus never lived for himself. Jesus Christ never lived for himself. If you look at um, the lives of many people, when an opportunity comes for exaltation and promotion, immediately they think that this is from God. This door is from God. This open door is from God. Or this exaltation is from God. God has brought this, and so now I'm going to take this, and this will be a big opportunity so that I can reach many more people. But when you look at Jesus Christ, he knew the assignment that was given by God to him. He knew why he came. There was no confusion in that. He never thought that, okay, now this opportunity has come. Why can't I try to make use of that? I can actually establish God's kingdom here by being a king. But that was not the plan of God. He could have done that, but the impact would have been very little. His death brought salvation to the whole world. Salvation to the whole world. By your death, I gain life. By your stripes, I'm healed. He knew one thing. There's this big vision. He came into this world, left heaven, and came to this world 
with this vision in mind. And his vision was to suffer and to die so that we may live. You call that the ultimate sacrifice. A sacrifice that Jesus made knowing how painful and how torturous it's going to be. And so when this opportunity came, he did not take that opportunity. He ran away from popularity. He ran away from that, what people would call temptation that Satan brought. Before his ministry, Satan came and said, I would give you fame. I would give you this. And he left heaven and he came here, not to be king over here. He's the king of the heavens and the earth. He left that and he came here. One reason, so that you and I can sit with him on the throne. Hallelujah. What a great sacrifice. He left his throne so that we can be co-heirs together with Jesus on the throne. Having seated together with Jesus Christ in the heavenly places, the Bible says. In order for us to be co-heirs with him, he left his throne and he came here. And when the enemy said, look, I'm going to give this to you so that your mission can be diverted. You can still share the gospel. You can still heal the sick. You can be a king and you can still do that because, look, so many people want you. He was not distracted by any earthly gain, so-called gain that the enemy would bring before him. God is speaking to our hearts today. God has a plan for your life. God has his call on your life. We must always know that the enemy will always bring something to make us think that this could be God's will and we can do this and serve God also and this can be a good platform. But there's a prophecy that God is bringing this hour. It can be a snare for you. It'll cut short the plan of God that God has for you. It is important for us to hold on a little longer. Hold on a little longer. Hold on a little longer. When we don't hold on a little longer, Satan will come and he will say, especially when God has a plan for our lives, Satan will come and he'll say, you know what? I'm going to give you an alternate route for you so that you can say that this is also God's will. We want to be found in the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is the best place for us to be where we can know the Father and the Father can know us. And by knowing the Father, we can do big things for God Almighty. So we see here, Jesus Christ, because the people were coming to make him king by force. It's not like they're coming to take him and put him in prison. They're trying to make him the king. And he ran away from that snare. Whatever your snare is, whatever Satan may try to bring to you, especially when you grow weary, especially when you're exhausted, Satan will come and say, you know what, there's a way out. There's a good way out. There's a godly way out. And there's a way out where you can actually do more for God. What do you have to suffer like this? What do you have to be a person? As Jesus said, right? The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Now you have a palace. You can actually become the king over there. And you can actually reach more people. You can actually have a bigger ministry. And no one can stand against you. You're still the son of God. But Jesus knew his mission. To all these, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And you know what Jesus did? He said, I'm not going to stay here and try to get you out. He said, I'll get myself out. There are times when we must get ourselves out of harm's way. We should not be staying there and saying that, oh, I'm going to stay here. Why should I move? And, and this uh, discomfort for me, let him move or her move and she move and they move and all those things. But God says, when there's a trap for you, get out, get out. Get out. When Satan comes to take the best away from you, get out. Move out of that way and go to a place. And you know what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't go alone and he didn't say, what a miserable life I have. I'm trying to do my work and look at these people. They're coming to He was in a person who was sitting by himself and complaining. No. He got alone and him being alone was his communion with God the Father. He was not by himself mourning and wailing about his miserable state. No, he was a warrior. 
He said, you're coming to take away my mission. You're coming to take away my call. I came with a purpose and you're going to touch that. I'm not going to let you do that. And he went to the Father. There he received his strength. When the enemy brings a snare for you, when the enemy brings a snare for you, it is very important for you at that point to withdraw and go and seek the Lord. It's not the time to keep yourself busy. There are a lot of people who do that. When they feel that they're being attacked, they say, okay, let me keep myself more busy and let me just occupy myself with a lot more things so that I'll feel safe. But your safety is not in keeping yourself occupied with other things. Your safety is keeping yourself occupied with God because that's the place where you receive that strength. And that strength from God will come to give you that clarity. Jesus didn't need clarity. He was already clear. That's what he read. But every single person needs to be in the presence of God where the spirit of God will come and he will fill your mind with greater strength and vision. Showing you, yes, palace is not the place. This is the place. But in this place, I will keep you until you say it's finished. When God said it's finished and Jesus said it's finished, it was finished. What was finished? His mission. Why he came to purchase salvation for us was finished on the cross. But until then, he had to be vigilant. Until then, he had to be watchful. Until then, he had to move from one place to the other when he had to. Until then, he had to withdraw himself during specific times. God is speaking to our hearts today. Do you know your mission? Do you know the purpose of God that God has for your life? It's a big mission. It's a big purpose. God's call is really big. Many times when we are not able to see it, we try to look at small things and we think that that's a big thing, but it's not. God says, I have big things in store for you. Big things in store for you. When the big things God has for you become bigger in your sight than the little things that you're looking at, you'll be willing to leave the little things for the big things because the temporary things may look like big gain, but it's not. God is speaking to hearts today. Jesus Christ, when they came to make him the king by force, he did not let any force dominate him. He had a greater force within him that was able to leave that. No force was able to forcefully do anything to him. The point here God is bringing is Satan will come with force. Satan will forcefully try to pressure us emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, in every way he will try to pressure us. Pressure us where? Out of the call of God, out of the will of God. It is at that time we have to say, no, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. This pressure is not going to take me down. I'm going to have the strength from God to get myself out of here, to go to God so that I can receive the greater strength of God and to perform great things for God. Now, a few more minutes, we're going to just dwell on a few more verses that I hear where the disciples and Jesus had something to do and the disciples went ahead according to the plan of God and they are in the boat and they're all going and Jesus was not there because Jesus was spending the time with God and he was getting what he needed to get for his next mission. Prayer is very important. If we think that I prayed yesterday, I prayed day before yesterday and you know I had the power and I can do it, you'll fall. Every day we need to be recharged in the presence of God. Every day we need to get the vision that God has for us. Every day we need to receive the strength of God. Before we can do anything for God, we need him. We need him in order to fulfill that which God has for us. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. If we want to do big things for God, we need God. If we want to overcome this world, we need God. Jesus said this. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome this world. What's the meaning of this? It's not like saying, be happy if you're hungry. I ate your food. That's not what Jesus said. <laughs> oh, in this world you have trouble, but be happy. I've overcome the world. What is he saying? If you are in him, you're like the baby that's in the mother's womb. When the baby eats, guess what? You get the food. 
But if you're outside, yeah, his victory has nothing to do with you. But if you're inside of him, and he said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world at that point. He got it, I got it. We have to be in him in order to experience that which God has for us. He went to the Father and he got what he needed. We need to go to God and get what we need to get. But we need to know this. It's because of him we have the victory in place. See, we are not functioning from this plane and we're not fighting with the enemy from this plane. The enemy is here. Where this, this is the earthly realm. There's the first heavens where the forces of darkness are there. They plan this scheme and they dispatch their enemies to us to fight with us where we are, flesh and blood. But beyond that first heaven, the second heaven and the third heaven, where God is, and we are seated together above that first heavens with Christ Almighty. Where is our feet? On the head of the serpent. If we are in him, if we are in him, from that place we fight, we are higher. It's much easier to see what the enemy is doing if we are in him. And we are praying and seeking the Lord. God shows what the enemy is doing. We have the greatest advantage where you can shoot arrows from the top down. We have the greatest advantage where we're able to actually see what the enemy is doing and to, and to pursue him. God has promised prosperity of our soul, our minds, our bodies, and everything that God has given to us. But how will we, we inherit it and walk in it? I'm just going to take you through the next few verses. It's very important for you. Just pay attention. When it became evening, his disciples went down to the sea. What were they doing? The will of God. They got into the boat and went over the sea towards Capernaum. Where are they going? They're going to where God wanted them to go to, which is the will of God. Then the sea arose because a great wind was blowing. It was not an accident. The enemy said, huh, you're all going without Jesus now. Let me see what I can do, something to scare you. And winds came at that point. But we need to know that if God tells us to do something and we're on his business, he is there all the time. God is there all the time. In the midst of that turmoil, in the midst of that situation, when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid. Already it's windy and they're struggling and they're rowing the boat. God, we shouldn't die here. We have to somehow make it. And they are putting all their effort into going. And suddenly Jesus is walking there and he's coming. Think about it for a minute. The power of Jesus Christ. These guys are struggling to row the boat to make it to the other side. There comes Jesus in the midst of that windy situation, turbulent waters. He is walking and he's coming. The power of God. Almighty God. Why did he do that? Every time God does something, it is to strengthen our faith. It is to strengthen our faith. Through this, the disciples got a closer look at Jesus Christ, the power of God. Not only did this Jesus heal the blind, heal the deaf, do you know what? He's the Lord God who's actually walking on this water. Not only does he have power to tell the wind to shut up and get out, but he's actually walking when not even on the calm waters, but turbulent waters. Jesus is walking. He has power over the winds and the waves. He has power over gravitational law, where he is actually above the water. The, the principle of buoyancy, everything's dissolved at that point, where he is actually walking, a human body with weight is walking on that water without sinking. Now it's windy too, in the midst of that, 
he is walking steadily they got shocked they said what is this how can this be and he said to them it is i do not be afraid you know what a loving sentence that is very loving sentence he didn't say how come you don't realize that you're missing me and it has to be me and how come you got scared he didn't scold them he said don't be afraid it's i don't be afraid you know god understands fear when you're going through situation and it's scary god understands that and he says don't be afraid to you he says don't be afraid it's i i'm here once we know that he is there all our fears are gone that's the reason why jesus looked at the disciples even from far away and he said it's i jesus was far away these people were far away think how jesus would have said he just said don't be afraid it is i loudly he would have spoken so that they can hear and as soon as they heard his voice they knew it was jesus see we need to have that intimate relationship with jesus christ where we can hear his voice when he says it is i we can just wonder who is it is my dad is my you know grandfather my uncle you know no we know it is jesus my sheep they hear my voice and they know me they know me our relationship with jesus christ will help us to recognize the voice of god during turbulent times when god speaks to us we'll know this is god speaking to us and that will impart great strength into our spirit not only that this is a prophecy that god is speaking at this hour we're in the midst of the difficult situation scary situation god not only assures us his presence his comfort but he says i'll do a miracle for you you rode 3 4 miles you struggled and you rode you know what the next half of the journey is not even going to be there i'm going to dissolve it i'm going to dissolve it what did god do jesus came and he got into the boat once jesus got into the boat the miracle here is and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going how did that happen 3 4 miles and then he had a long way to go to the shore how did that boat reach the shore immediately instantaneously another miracle that they saw the winds can come and disturb us the storm can try to come and scare us a prophecy that god is speaking to us whatever may happen to us know this for sure the word that god gives us don't be afraid it's i i'm with you i'm with you don't be afraid once he gets into your boat your boat will reach the shore in no time in no time whatever you may be going through once the spirit of god comes and does his work it's over it's over we will reach the shore in no time and what god wants us to do there will get done no winds no storm can stop us from fulfilling the work of god jesus will come just in time just in time just in time that's the word god has bring to this house of god just in time in the midst of the winds in the midst of the turbulent waters god will come just in time and the spirit of god is telling you this today he's telling you this today don't be afraid no matter what you're seeing no matter what you're facing no matter how scary it may appear god says don't be afraid don't be afraid i am with you and he says i will go with you from this point onwards i'll go with you i'll go with you i'll go with you because you are doing my will i will cut short the journey when we face turbulent waters when we face difficult times and it looks like oh lord i've rowed for 3 to 4 miles i've been rowing and I have some more to go when I'm exhausted from rowing. God knows already your shoulders are hurting, your hands are hurting and the wind was so strong and God says you don't have to row. 
the next half of the journey, you don't have to draw. I'll take you. I'll take you. And it's going to end just like that. Suddenly. Suddenly it'll end. Suddenly it'll end. This word God is giving. Suddenly it'll end. What happened to the winds? What happened to the waves? What happened to the turbulent waters? All gone. All of a sudden, they didn't have to row after Jesus got into the boat. God is speaking at this hour. The exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, physical exhaustion, even spiritual exhaustion you may face is a result of the current that is around you. God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'll be with you. Don't be afraid. And I will get into your boat. And I will take you to the other side. In no time, in no time, you will get to the end in no time. Right now it may look scary. Right now it may look like it's turbulent. Right now it may appear like, oh God, how am I going to get out of this? I have another half the journey to make to get there. Jesus said, I'm getting into your boat. Don't be afraid. It is I. God will be with you no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through. The Spirit of God is giving this clear word, this assurance that he is with you and he will take you to the other side. You won't have to roar. You won't have to roar after Jesus gets into that boat. And yes, in the midst of the winds, in the midst of the turbulent situation, he is coming to get into your boat, to solve your problems. Not only that, to use you for the extension of his kingdom. Shall we all stand up together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is I don't be afraid. Hallelujah. In the midst of the difficult situation, Jesus showed up. Hallelujah. In the midst of your difficult situation, Jesus is going to show up. In the midst of your difficult situation, Jesus is going to show up. Hallelujah. When we are about our father's business, in the midst of our difficult situation, Jesus will show up. Hallelujah. And he will say enough and he'll cut short that rowing. In the midst of that exhaustion, suddenly we'll feel that relief. We won't have to row. Hallelujah. God will cause the boat to land immediately. Hallelujah. So that we can get the work of the Lord done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what situation you may be facing. No matter what discouraging situation you may be facing. The Holy Spirit says, I am coming. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. I will get into your boat. You let the presence of God invade you. He will take care of the rest. Hallelujah. You let the presence of God do its work inside of you. He will give you the rest that you need. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, that toil will cease. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, that exhaustion will be turned into joy. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, you have this delight that Jesus is there and you have new conversations and this excitement of what's next. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the wind lost its power. All of a sudden, the turbulent waters lost its power. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord of heaven and earth, he is walking. Hallelujah. He's coming towards you. Hallelujah. He's coming towards you to give you that relief. Hold on a little longer, says the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's coming to give you that relief. Hallelujah. He's coming to give this church the relief. Hallelujah. Hold on just a little longer. Hallelujah. A little longer. Hallelujah. You've rode three miles and four miles. And the Lord says, oh, a little more, a little more, a little more. A little more. Hallelujah. Few more minutes, hallelujah. Few more minutes, Jesus is coming, hallelujah. Jesus is coming. When we are on our Father's business, when we are about our Father's business, when we are on the way to do His work and the enemy comes, the Lord says, I'm coming. I'm coming. He's coming. I'm coming, hallelujah. 
I will be in your boat and I will take you to the other side. Hallelujah. And your toil will come to an end. Hallelujah. Your toil will come to an end. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. God is on the move. Hallelujah. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Hallelujah. God is on the move. Hallelujah. God is coming to dispel your confusion. Hallelujah. God is coming to dispel your fear. Hallelujah. God is coming to dispel the darkness. Hallelujah. God is coming to dispel the winds and the waves. Hallelujah. God is coming to take you to the other side quickly. Hallelujah. Quickly. Hallelujah. Quickly, hallelujah. There is the miracle, hallelujah. There is the miracle. No matter what you may be going through, no matter how difficult, no matter how difficult it may appear, no matter how lonely you may feel in the middle of that trial, difficulty, God says, I am coming to get into the boat to get you on the other side. I am coming to give you relief, hallelujah. To silence everything that is agitating around you and agitating you hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus not only will the Lord God silence the commotion around you but the Lord God will calm your fears hallelujah God is here to calm your fears hallelujah the unknown God knows hallelujah the unknown God knows you don't know but he knows hallelujah he knows the end from the beginning. You're unknown. He knows. Hallelujah. And he is coming to give you relief. He is coming to give you rest. Hallelujah. He is coming to give you rest from your toil. Hallelujah. He's coming to give you rest. Hallelujah. God is coming to give you peace. Hallelujah. God is coming to give you peace. Hallelujah. Oh, God is coming to take away your fears. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He drives out the enemy before you. Hallelujah. And he'll take you to the other side in no time. Hallelujah. Immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. Hallelujah. Your boat will reach the other side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Shall we all stand up together? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And believe in the word of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Believe in the word that God has given. Believe that it is for you. Hallelujah. God is here to calm your fears. And God is here to give you his peace. God is here to give you rest from your toil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is here. God is here. The Lord says, flee away from every snare of the enemy. Flee away from every snare of the enemy. Hallelujah. And the strength of God will fill you to strengthen others. The strength of God will fill you to strengthen others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At your command, the birds fed you man. At your command, the widow fed your man at your command the angel fed your man after your command the earth devoured those who resisted you after your command the dead man comes out of his grave after your command the demon shriek and to leave yes they Those who resisted you at the command, the dead man comes out of his grave. At the command, the demon shriek and to leave, yes, they leave. Hallelujah. Who can't resist your command, Jesus? Who can't say no? To your command, you clear the way, you make a way at your word, everything obeys. Hallelujah! You clear.
clear the way You make the way At your word Everything obeys You clear the way You make a way At your word Everything obeys Hallelujah You clear the way You make a way At your word Everything obeys Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, when Jesus comes, hallelujah, he clears everything that is before us. And the boat reaches the other side instantaneously, hallelujah. At his command, at his command, the boat moved, hallelujah. The boat moved, hallelujah. The boat moved. If the sun can stand still. My God cannot do. Hallelujah. What is there that my God cannot do? Hallelujah. If the sun can stand still. Hallelujah. He can bring the land to the boat. He can bring the boat to the land. Doesn't matter. We reach the other side in no time. Hallelujah. He does all things. God does all things. God does all things. Hallelujah. You clear the way. Sing with faith in your heart. You make a way. At your word, everything obeys, hallelujah. You clear the way, you make a way. At your word, everything obeys. One more time, sing the last time. You clear the way, you make a way. At your word, everything obeys. At the word of the Lord, the winds and the waves, they obey. At the word of the Lord, the boat obeys. At the word of the, the land obeys. At the word of the Lord, everything obeys. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. In your situation, whatever looks impossible. In your situation, whatever looks scary. In your situation, whatever may be disturbing you and upsetting you and bringing fear. God says, I am here. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. I am here. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. I have come so that you may reach the land safely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come so that you may reach the land safely in no time. Hallelujah. I see your toil. I see, I see the amount of effort that you put. And the Lord says, after this, no effort. Hallelujah. After this, I will take you to the other side. In no time, the boat will land immediately. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus saw, Jesus saw them toiling. Jesus saw them toiling, doing the will of the Father. Jesus saw them rowing in the midst of that difficulty. Jesus saw that and he said, I am coming, hallelujah. And I'm coming on the waters just for you, hallelujah. So I can go with you, take you to the other side, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He sees your toil. He sees your labor. He sees your effort in doing the will of God. And God is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, he's bring, bringing peace into your situation. He's bringing peace into your situation. Hallelujah. As you hold on to this word of God, you will see this word of God come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Doing the will of the Father is the most important thing. Hallelujah. And he will do everything that is needed to take you to the other side. To fulfill that big plan of God. Hallelujah. These were the very same people. More than once the enemy tried to take them down. More than once the enemy tried to drown them. Anything and these were the very same people who turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will do the same thing for each and every single one of you. When you say, Lord, I will hold on. Hallelujah. I will hold on. Hallelujah. I will hold on to this word. Hallelujah. And I know I will reach the other side. I know you will come for me. Hallelujah. I know you will get into my boat and you'll take me immediately to the other side. Hallelujah. 
where I will see the work of God take place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that you gave to us. You're so faithful and you're so true. You see all that we're going through. And you have come to minister to our spirits today, to every single one here, to speak to them, to say that, don't be afraid. I'm here with you. Hallelujah. I'm going to take to the other side. Hallelujah. And cause you to experience the miracle. Hallelujah. Of getting to the land immediately. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As you showed your disciples how much you cared, you're here to show your people how much you care. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you go home with your people. Strengthen your people all the more. May the strength of the Almighty God become their strength in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That with that strength, may they pursue the enemy until the enemy is utterly destroyed. Hallelujah. That they may overtake the enemy and take that which belongs to them. And take that which belongs to the enemy. Hallelujah. Oh, and be of great blessing to your kingdom. With this blessing, I bless your people with, and I thank you for doing this. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and bless us with his peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all now. And until we see Jesus face to face, amen. Amen. Good Jesus. God bless all of you. Have a blessed um, evening, rest of the evening, and a blessed week. God bless you all. Bye. Praise God.